Yo, what is up? It's your boy Zether, and I just hit 6K. Let's go, guys. This is, I mean, I know a lot of YouTubers do that. Like, oh my God, if it, if it wasn't for you guys, uh, but truly, like, really, thank you. Like, you guys have no clue what it's like to six months ago have been watching Kid Zeus and that one weeb and you know we the Celestials making what ifs and being like wow like they're they're really good at making content and being like ah dang it like I you know it'd be cool if I made my own what if videos or you know anybody in general King Donald you know people like them making what if videos and I used to comment on all their stuff being like yo dude video is great love the content and now I'm one of the people who's making it and on top of that I hit 6k in under in five months what that is that is absolutely mind-boggling guys but <laughs> before the video gets started I just want to say a couple of thank yous to a lot of special special people in my life number one all the people who helped me get here you guys thank you guys so much for clicking on the videos liking commenting subscribing I would not have made it here without you guys number two my friends over there, you know, Kid Zeus, that one weeb, King Donald, and, you know, my girlfriend. Because, I mean, if it wasn't her for her, I wouldn't have the mic that I use for the videos. And the sound quality would be even more butt cheeks. Now, with that being said, I am going to be getting a new mic pretty soon. You know, I want I want the quality of my videos to go up. And, you know, I want to I wanna go up there and be one of the big what-if guys. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to be the next Masako X, so... <laughs> with that being said guys i hope you guys enjoyed this 6k special put a lot of work into it i hope you guys enjoy it and with that being said enough jibber jabber and let's just go ahead and um get started so <laughs> yeah let's go ahead and get started into this amazing what if that is what if deku was gojo's reincarnation so we're essentially going to be starting at the birth of deku now in this version of events deku is actually going to be born with the white hair as well as the infinite, you know, the infinite, uh, <clears throat> or, or sorry, not infinite. Yeah, he's going to have infinite. He's going to have limitless. And he's also going to have the six eyes. And yeah, he's going to be OP as heck. He's going to be broken as like as much as you guys think. And yeah, this is going to be a pretty strong Deku. So anyways, when Deku's born, Hisashi just looks at Deku and he's like, uh, he looks straight at Inko with daggers. Actually, she's like, no, 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 no. It's, it's not what it looks like. As uh, so she's like, can I get a DNA test on this kid? As the doctors then come in and say, what for, sir? And he's like, I need a DNA kit test. As the doctors are just like, oh, okay. As they get him tested, and yep, it is Hisashi's son. Inko didn't cheat. And Hisashi calms down a little bit. This, this is when the doctors will walk in and say, well, oftentimes kids will be born with mutations. This might just be a mutation or might have something to do with its quirk. As, you know, Hisashi's just like, oh, I'm, oh, okay. Let me find out. Eh? He, he, he just looking at Inko. He's like, you're safe for now. Yeah, but let me find out later on. I swear to God. <laughs> but yeah, honestly, that Hisashi just like sus as hell right now. And, you know, Inko's just like, Whew. glad that's settled. But anyways, this is when Gojo would, I mean, sorry, not Gojo, but Deku would open his eyes as, you know, they would see the beautiful blue eyes as Inko and Asashi would just get lost in them. I mean, six eyes are overpowered. And if you guys want to know Gojo's ability, for those of you who are like, who don't really watch Jujutsu Kaisen or like are just like normal fans kind of like me. I'm more of a normal fan, but honestly, I'm fascinated by Gojo and his abilities, his infinite I might be messing up some of the stuff here and then because like I'm not like the craziest Jujutsu Kaisen fan in the world. But I mean, who doesn't like Gojo? His amazing personality, his powers, his his, his you know, his confidence. It's it's just it's nice, honestly. It's it's dope. So yeah, that being said, that's why I'm doing Gojo. I know I might mess up a little not here and there, say a couple things wrong, but y'all bear with me. It's still gonna be a fire what if regardless. I don't really know Jujutsu Kaisen like that, but you know. Uh, you know, Gojo's pretty dope, so <laughs> I figured I'd drop this for y'all. Since y'all have been wanting it for a while, I figured, you know what? I got y'all. So, <laughs> anyways, so after this day, Deku will actually grow up a lot differently. In this version, Deku's actually going to have Gojo's playful and lazy personality where he doesn't really like to try and he's kind of late to most things. He also is really lazy a lot of the times and he's a really playful and like just goofy guy. 
his energy just honestly just rubs off on the other kids when he's growing up and he just has a way of making other kids laugh i mean everybody just has that personality of gojo and it's just it's just so infectious to the other kids that the other kids honestly start acting like him and a lot of people actually start thinking that deku's awesome i mean he's incredible he's he's the guy as for bakugo you know, he's like, ah, that kid, he's, he's, he's nothing. As, you know, he kind of just looks at Deku like his rival, I guess you could say. As this, this is when, you know, these years, Deku would have actually always had his quirk of infinite. Or as it's not actually a quirk in this version, it's quite literally going to be everything that Gojo has. Except he's not going to get it all off rip. He's going to get some things. And so for the beginning, all he's going to have is the six eyes. Um, his, uh, his infinite, it's infinite infinity and his, uh, limitless ability, basically his limited, uh, cursed energy. So yeah, it basically lets him, uh, you know, be strong or whatever. And he also has his enhanced superhuman capabilities, like strength, speed, and enhanced perception. So that's essentially what, you know, Deku's going to have. And this is when they're about four years old as all the classes around Deku, like you're awesome. As soon as when, you know, Kachan awakens his quirk, he's just like, <laughs> as he's like, I'm strong now. As he tells Deku to fight him, see whose quirk is better. If it's your weak little infinite quirk or my explosions. As they go outside and Deku's just like, I don't want to do this, Bakugo. As Bakugo's just like, I don't care. I'm going to fight you and I'm going to win. And Bakugo rushes at Deku as he shoots an explosion at Deku, but nothing. It just doesn't even touch him. As Deku just stands, as Deku just kind of blitzes Bakugo and then elbows him right in the stomach, causing Bakugo to spit out some, you know, not some blood, but, you know, like, <laughs> you know, like that thing in the anime where Bakugo is just like, <clears throat> and this is when the teachers come outside and see Deku punching Bakugo. And they're like, Deku, what the? As other kids are like, no, 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 no. Ba Bakugo started it. He came up to Deku and said, fight me. You don't have a choice. I'm going to prove that my quirk's better. And, you know, they're all making fun of Bakugo. And this is when Bakugo just kind of gets a little bit of a grudge towards Deku. And this this is what causes Bakugo to train a lot more during these next couple of years, making us have a two times stronger Bakugo as soon as we get to the, you know, the day of the Sludge Villain incident. So, and, you know, we're going to go ahead and have a little bit of time skip with a little bit of briefing on how the years go by. So for the next couple of years, Deku just kind of stays popular and goofy, and his personality is really infectious. By the time that he's in middle school, he still has a lot of friends, but, you know, some of the nerdy ones and some of the ones who get annoyed really easily don't really like Deku. They see him as kind of annoying, but to the, mo to the majority of people, they really like Deku, including the teachers. And Deku also isn't exactly the brightest cookie because, you know, he's, he's extremely, you know, battle smart and street smart. But in terms of book smart, he's, he's lacking in that. So, yeah. So for the next couple of years, Bakugo is the one who's more smarter and, you know, cockier. And he has the other people who, you know, he kind of just uh, kind of makes friends with like the more lamey kids or like the ones who are kind of just submissive to Bakugo's, you know, his reign of terror, I guess you could say, and his iron fist. So, you know, for the next couple of years, Bakugo would always end up trying to catch Bakugo, I mean, to catch Deku off guard and try to fight him every now and then. He would always be like, hey, Deku, fight me. I've gotten stronger than you. And Deku would always pretty much whoop him. And this would lead to hatred, which would lead to them pretty much fighting every other day, which would lead to them both kind of becoming sparring partners. And Deku and Bakugo kind of having a little bit of an orthodox friendship where Bakugo thinks Deku's annoying, but he can tolerate him. And after a while, by the time that they get to the first year of middle school, you know, he finally has, you know, Deku's personality rub off on him. And this makes Deku, or I mean, sorry, not Deku, but Bakugo, be a little less of a dickhead. By this time, Bakugo kind of lost a lot of it. And his, you know, tough guy bravado is kind of gone. Now he's more kind of like a little goofy, but still serious when he has to be. Way more than, you know, I guess he could, I guess he has more of an Itadori personality. With, you know, a little bit of anger issues thrown in there. So, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much how that goes. Or, 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 uh, or, um, oh my god, I'm gonna get so much hate for this. <laughs> um, the guy who can summon the wolves. <laughs> a lot of Jujutsu Kaisens are down there in the comments like, You don't know Jujutsu Kaisen? Why, why are you making this video, you, you, ah! And I'm just gonna be there like, sorry man, uh, what do you want, a, a cookie? A, a fortune cookie? <laughs> So, yeah, all right, all right, all right. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. But seriously, you know, all jokes aside, though, 
This basically creates a Bakugo, who in this version of events is actually going to be two times stronger than the Bakugo in the original canon, meaning that his explosions are two times stronger, his hand-to-hand -hand combat abilities are stronger, he's faster, quicker, and smarter. So this Bakugo is definitely going to have a lot more on, you know, the, the, the one that we have in canon. So, you know, this resorts in a kind of friendship between Deku and Bakugo. And by the time that the Sludge Bone Day comes around, they're pretty good friends. So, by this point, Deku and Bakugo finally, you know, squashed the beef and ended up becoming some sort of trading partners with a weird dynamic, you know, where Bakugo thinks he's getting closer to Deku, but Deku just kind of holds back the whole time, not wanting to reveal his full strength to Bakugo. So, yeah. Also, one more thing before I keep going, he's going to be the only user of cursed energy. I'm not adding no cursed objects, meaning no blade that ended up killing Gojo. And honestly, I'm gonna just keep it real with you guys. This is gonna be more for just lols. And uh, when, I, when I'm saying this, there will be literally nobody who is going to pose a threat to Deku. But y'all already knew that. Come on now, we like broken Dekus around here. <laughs> so yeah, oh, and one more thing. His drip is actually still going to be that sweet, sweet Gojo drip. He is going to love wearing black clothing, and he is going to be wearing that blindfold. A lot of the other kids will think it's kind of weird, but, you know, Deku would just kind of vibe with it. Because when he has his six eyes, he can, you know, kind of see everything. It's a little, you know, annoying to him. So he kind of just wears the blindfold. So, yeah, that's how I'm going to describe it. I know that's not the real reason, but, you know, that's just how I'm going to say it for this Deku. Okay, so don't be typing up your comments down below. Anyways, this this is when, you know, the day of the sludge bone would arrive. And the teacher would walk in, you know, doing his little, you know, charade where, he, yeah, you don't want to be here. Uh, blah, 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 blah. And by this time, you know, Deku and Bakugo would be told that they want to go to UA. As the class would just be like, yeah, you guys are definitely going to be making a UA with your amazing quirks and your potential, especially Deku. You're going to be the next number one. As Bakugo just smiles, thinking like, yeah. I mean, no matter how strong I get, I'll probably never catch up to him. But a part of him just wants to do it. You know, he kind of has like that wanting and drive to fight. He also has that heroic personality come out of him more. Since this time, he's not that much of a dickhead. He kind of has that hero aspect come out a bit more. So, yeah, the day of the sludge van arrives, uh, Bakugo asks if he wants to go train. And this is when Deku would say, mm, not really. I kind of just want to go lay down today. As Bakugo would say... You're always so lazy, Deku. As he still would have actually gotten the nickname. And then Deku would actually not call Bakugo Bakugo. He'd say, yeah, whatever, Kachan. As he would pretty much walk home with his hands behind his head. Just like whistling, you know, as he walks through the tunnel. Taking a different path because he doesn't want to take a sweet ass time. He just wants to hurry up there. As the sludge bone comes out and Deku could sense it instantly. As the sludge bone rushes at Deku, Deku would just have his limp, his uh, infinite infinity, you know, go around himself. As the sludge bone basically tries to hit Deku, but since he has, uh, you know, bad intentions, it doesn't touch him. And when the sludge bone thinks he's swallowing Deku, Deku's just kind of sitting there, like, <sighs> you know, just yawning, be like, "Are you done yet? I need to get home. I'm tired. I want to go to sleep." As the sludge bone just like, "What the hell?" As Deku's just like. <laughs> as Deku just smiles and stomps the sludge bone, blitzing out of it and pretty much running around it so fast that the sludge bone basically has a tornado coming and the sludge bone just gets blown away. And this, this one All Might would pretty much appear as All Might would appear and Deku would actually still end up freaking out because, I mean, he is a little bit lazy, but he still knows about All Might and that's still his hero. As well as Deku's goofy personality, I definitely think that All Might would be his hero. So... This is when Deku and Alma would proceed to talk, and Alma would ask Deku what he did. As Deku would just say, oh, I just ran so fast that I created a void and, you know, a little, you know, little void as the Sludge Bone just got blown away. As Alma would say, what's your quirk, kid? Do you have super speed? As Deku would say, uh, not exactly. As he would tell Alma to punch him. As Alma would say, are you crazy, kid? I could really hurt you like that. And Deku would say, nah, just, just punch me. As Alma would say, oh, Okay, as he's like, you sure about this kid? As Deku's like, punch me! As All Might just comes in and goes, smash! As he comes in to punch Deku, not as hard as possible, he's holding back a lot. And as he feels that the punch connects, Deku's just smiling there. As All Might's just there like, uh... As Deku's just like, yeah, it's called infinity. You cannot touch me. 
as All Might is just like, uh, that's incredible. As, you know, he then proceeds to ask Deku if he would be willing to take his quirk. As he explains all the you know, intricacies of it, as Deku was just like, nah, I don't really feel like taking your quirk. But I do offer someone, I do know somebody else who would probably be perfect for this. He's pretty strong, and if you train him right, he could probably be even better than you. As All Might is actually extremely intrigued by this, and Deku would say, here, how about this? Uh, me... Meet us at the arcade tomorrow. As Alma would say, arcade? As Dick would say, yeah, just, yeah, I, I mean, we were going to go to the arcade anyways. Just just meet us here. As he would give Alma at this address and tell him to go at a certain time. So this is when the next day would appear. And, you know, Deku and Makugo would have actually already had this thing planned. Where they were going to go to the arcade and just have a little bit of fun. As Alma would appear there and everybody would just be, you know, bagging on him. I mean, not bagging, but like all around him. As Alma is trying to get people off of him. As, you know, this is when he sees Deku and Bakugo. As Deku would say, uh, yeah, this is not going to work. As All Might says, you think? As... <laughs> You know, this is when Deku would say, okay, okay, okay. How about, where, where do you, where do you, where would you want to go? As Alma would say, let's go to Dagoma Beach. As they'd, as Deku would say, how about we have a little bit of a friendly race there? As Bakugo would say, <laughs> you're on. As Deku says, three, two, and he rushes off, kind of cheating. As All Might and Bakugo look at each other and say, hey, where you cheated? As they blitz off. And this is when Bakugo, All Might, and Deku would run off. As, honestly... Nobody can really see them. All Might's just jumping off, and since Bakugo's going so fast, a lot of people, I mean, you could see him, but you can't really make out who he is. He's moving that fast. As Deku pretty much is moving incredibly fast. It looks like he damn near just, just teleporting from point A to point B. As he arrives at Diggum Beach in about a, um, a little bit. You know, I don't, I don't, I'm, I don't know. I don't want to overestimate him or underestimate him. So let's just say that he took it easy. I don't know. Let's just say a minute, okay? Let's just say a minute. He blitzed there in about a minute. Uh, I don't know. I don't feel like that's doing him justice. 30 seconds. 30 second blitz. As Bakugo would arrive in about mm, five minutes. And All Might would arrive in, you know, uh, four minutes. Yeah, let's go four minutes. Yeah, because of his injury. Yeah, four minutes. And this is when All Might would actually be impressed at Bakugo. Seeing how fast he is already. As he would proceed to, uh, you know, ask Bakugo if he would be willing to take his quirk. As Bakugo would just be like, uh, are you serious, All Might? As he would say, yeah, I've been looking for a successor. As he then proceeds to explain stuff to Bakugo. And Bakugo in a heartbeat would say yes. This is when Alma would start looking around and say, well, you better get to training. As B Bakugo would say, why not just get it now? As All Might says that I'd like you to, you know, improve your body a bit more. So, for the next three months, Bakugo would proceed to clean the beach. As, as you know, All Might and Bakugo actually end up asking Deku if he would actually want to train with him and Deku kind of just brushes it off saying that he doesn't really need to train and he just kind of goofs off during the entire 10 months or we're gonna go eight months eight months and for the first I'm gonna explain Bakugo first then I'll explain Deku so for the eight months for the first three Bakugo would have essentially been moving the trash and it would have taken him a long time because actually no let's say four months because he wasn't using his quirk so he didn't have that advantage but four months is way better than nothing so for the next four months uh, no, for the next one month, Bakugo is essentially getting, tr getting, uh, you know, combat training with his normal quirk, trying to improve that as much as possible. And this is what Alma would tell him that with this quirk, his, 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 uh, his, you know, already incredible power is going to get increased. So he needs to be able to handle that. As Bakugo understands that he inherits the quirk, as he then, you know, ends up training with it for the next four months, as he would actually, for the first month, actually be using it in one part of his body. So he then realized that he should try to, you know, channel it through his body. And it would be actually pretty quick. So for the next three months, Bakugo would actually end up trying to learn how to use full count. As during that time, Bakugo would actually end up using about, let's say, 20% full count. Let's just give him 20% 20, 20 full count. As Bakugo would actually be, you know, will, really, really, <laughs> really freaking strong. As Bakugo would have definitely gotten a lot of improvements over this break. As for Deku, this entire time, he was just kind of eating chips, ice cream, going out, dating some random girls, and just kind of having a lot of fun, just goofing off and watching anime and reading manga. I mean, Deku was just slacking off, and, you know, Deku would have actually not been talking to Bakugo during this time. It's, he was too lazy, he was just taking it extremely easy, sleeping all day, and, you know, 
you know, barely doing anything at all. <laughs> the most, you know, exercise he got was walking. So, you know, Deku ended up getting a little chubby over the break. So one day around the eight month mark when Baku goes to see Deku, he would actually see a chubby Deku be like, yo, what's up? As Baku would say, Deku, is that you? As he would say, hey, Kachan, long time no see. As Kachan would just be like, uh, dude, how... The entrance exam is in two months. As Deku would say, wait, that that's in two months? As, you know, Baku would say, yes. As he would say, you need to lose weight now. As Deku would say, nah, I, nah, I still got time. As Baku would grab as Deku by the hair. And Deku, you know, there's no negative intent by it. So he would just get dragged out to the beach. As for the next two months, Deku would actually be forced to train with them. And... This would actually, you know, end up having Deku, you know, pushing himself. Seeing that Bakugo's pushing himself, he would want to actually push himself as well as lose the weight because he thinks it kind of makes his figure look a little ugly. So for the next two months, Deku actually ends up training with his body a lot, increasing his physical stats, and he actually ends up developing a couple of moves. So he actually ends up unlocking blue, essentially the ability to pull someone, and red essentially the ability to push them on it. It's like a magnet, just push and pull. So yeah, it's pretty simple. Blue is pull, red is push. And we also have purple, which is essentially, it's kind of like a thing where he he just says purple and it kind of just blows something up, disintegrating it pretty much. I'm giving like these really basic things because some of you guys may not actually watch Jujutsu Kaisen and just be like, huh, 6K special, long, let's go so yeah essentially that's why i'm explaining so yeah and he would have also actually developed domain expansion so yeah this is definitely going to be helping deku in the long run so yeah now this is when we're going to go ahead and jump into when they're actually taking the real exam <clears throat> sorry boys i had to clear my throat real quick hold on Ugh, allergies Anyways, so this is when Deku and Bakugo would proceed to go to the exam day. And by this time, Bakugo would have actually gotten to 35, 30%, 30% one for all after all this time had passed by. And, you know, he would have actually ended up mastering it for the next two months, I guess you could say, getting a hold on one for all's capabilities. So Bakugo would be extremely powerful. And this, this is when we're going to go ahead and jump into it. Now, this is when this time Bakugo would actually bump into Araka. And the exchange would go a lot different since Bakugo is actually confident and he actually knows how to talk to girls. So he would actually have a pretty sweet time talking to Araka. And this is when Deku would just kind of smile as he would then look at Bakugo and think, huh, good for him. As he would then walk inside and he would actually be sweating buckets thinking, oh crap, I didn't study. As Bakugo's like, you didn't study? As Deku just like, ah, don't, don't worry, I'll, I'll, I'll pass. As you know. Deku would actually, you know, during this time that he has, he would actually just be looking at other people's papers, using it at increased speed, just go around and cheat while the cameras aren't looking or people aren't looking. So Deku would look over a couple of people's papers using his six eyes to look around, basically, as Deku would copy down a lot of answers. Luckily, unluckily, actually, a lot of those people would actually get a lot of those answers wrong. So this means that a lot of the times, Deku actually ended up getting a lot of the questions wrong. And this would result in Deku barely managing to get by as Deku would have barely passed that portion of the exam and this this would mean that Deku's essentially one of the ones who's pretty much first just being like uh, if I pass I pass if I don't I don't and Bakugo would actually be pretty pissed when they step outside as he would say he'd be pretty damn mad at Deku as Deku would just say yeah I'll study some other day as Bakugo would just say can't do anything about it anyway as this is when the, you know, they'd pretty much just start. And there'd be no real reason for Bakugo to go up to Uraka. So no Ida thing. And no Ida thing inside either. And Deku wouldn't really, actually no, yeah. There'd definitely be an Ida thing since Deku would look so worried and he would be sweating buckets. As Ida would have actually pulled into that out and been like, you, you need to stop sweating. Just get your get yourself together. As Deku would have just been like, uh, yeah. Since he's not a mean guy, he still would be kind of cool. So he wouldn't really mind that, you know, somebody calling him out. He wouldn't really care. He'd still be a chill ass guy. So yeah. So they're outside and the battles get announced. There's no countdowns in a real battle. And you know, Deku and Bakugo would proceed to blitz off as Deku would actually at first go crazy as he destroys about 20 robots. As after that, he would actually look around and see how the other kids are doing as he's like, huh, seems like I don't really have to try. I mean, they're not gonna get anywhere near 50 points. As Deku's just like, I don't really wanna try too hard. 
Uh, so he then look at Bakugo as he's destroying a couple robots and then decide, you know what, I guess I'll show off a little bit. As in a flash, Deku would rush by and eliminate 30 robots, getting a total of, uh, let's say, 69 points. As afterwards, after exploding all of them, Deku would walk away from the explosion like a, like a badass as he would then put his hands in his pockets and say, Noise. And this... This is when, you know, Bakugo would look at him and just kind of, you know, sigh as he slaps his face and he's just like, ah, whatever. And this, this is when the zero pointer would come out as this time, instead of Deku being the one who saves him, Deku would just look at Bakugo as Bakugo would know what's up. And Bakugo would just say, huh, no, you aren't going to do it. As Bakugo would then rush in there using his full power explosions to grab Araka. As he holds her with one arm and jumps up as he flies with the, with the other onto the onto the robot. As he would then proceed to use 30, 32% full cowling, his max capabilities. As he kicks the robot's head, sending it flying meters away. As the zero pointer would fall and Bakugo would have actually ended up saving Araka. So, this, this would actually end up helping him. So... This would actually, you know, let, you know, a couple things happen. And, yeah. And since, you know, Baku actually ended up getting humbled by Deku, it would have actually really brought out his more heroic and, you know, not mean nature. So, that's essentially why Baku would have done that. Anyways, with that being said, this also kind of annoys, you know... <clears throat> uh, uh, never mind, never mind. It doesn't annoy nobody. Anyway, so, yeah, that's pretty much how that goes. And for the next pretty much week... This is when, you know, Deku would pretty much just wait and just chill out as he's just waiting for his letter to come as Bakugo is actually doing the same. And they're both actually having a pretty good time together since, you know, they're both kind of chilling on these days thinking that, you know, this is their, you know, first chance to chill in a while. So this they better take advantage of it and full advantage of it at that as Deku and Bakugo would actually proceed to have a pretty good two day break as they would get their letters and they would both actually be told that they both passed with Deku being told that he passed with a good amount of points but his test barely 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 passed he passed by one point as Deku would grin thinking that yeah if he would have taken that himself he probably would have failed even more as this is when we're going to just go ahead and jump into the first day of school the day where they were right Deku and Bakugo would arrive at the same time as Bakugo would put his feet up on, on the desk, as Deku would just sit on sit on the, the desk right next to him. As Ida would come in and start, you know, being annoying like usual, just being like, Hey, you guys should not be disrespecting that UA school property. There is upperclassmen. As some girl would actually come in out of nowhere and say, Hey, dude, you need to chill out. We're just in here to have fun, dude. Like, we made it into the school. They're just desks. As Ida would just be like, uh, uh, How dare you? <laughs> As he would turn into a Super Saiyan and proceed to explode the entire... I'm just playing, but I'll, I'll just decide. But anyways, he would then be like, whatever. As he would then proceed to just walk away as he's just like, I'm not going to get through to these kids, am I? Ash, you know, Deku would say, what's your name? So Baku would say, yeah, what, what is your name? And she would say, oh, my name? Oh, I'm, I'm Trice. As, uh, you know, she's actually going to be replacing Hagakure or Invisible Girl since I don't think she actually does anything or even pro provide any comedic relief. So, that's essentially what happens there. Also, um, you know, they want <clears throat> to... Oh, and also one more thing. If you want to know who Trice is, it's actually an original character. I'm going to be leaving the link down in the description for the original creator. Definitely go check her out. And she actually makes some pretty dope artwork. And, you know, she's pretty cool. So, and the, you know, character design and quirk is honestly amazing. That's why I'd be using it in my series. I know, you know. I figured I'd bring her back, you know, just for the one time. Also, if you guys want to see what she looks like, go on my community tab and you, there should be an image of a My Hero Academia OC. So that's where it'll be. Anyways, this this is when they would proceed to, you know, have Araka come in and usual stuff happening with Aizawa telling them to go get dressed. Now, this is when Kirishima would actually point out Bakugo and Deku, who are actually pretty ripped, with Bakugo being more ripped, but Deku is just honestly naturally ripped by himself when he's not, you know doing everything wrong to take advantage of his you know natural physique so this this is when Deku would proceed to go over to the thing as Bakugo actually throws the ball first getting a really amazing score getting 2,000 meters with one for all and you know stronger explosions I definitely believe he would actually be able to pull out like 2,500 something meters and this this is when everybody else would go getting normal normal score with their rocket getting infinity 
And this one is all with the ball at Teclas. He would be thinking that this kid is going to be nothing considering how bad he did in the exam. As well as how, how you know, decent he did in the robot point. As Deku would grab the ball and say, huh. All right. As Aizawa would say, get it over with. As he's like, if, if oh yeah, oh, oh, I forgot to mention. If you guys get a losing score, you will be expelled. As Deku just kind of has shivers go down his spine. As he then says, yeah, I got to try. As he would then grab the ball and say, red. As he would throw the ball. As it would pretty much push into outer space. As Deku would proceed to get infinity. And the rest of the class would just have their entire jaws drop. Especially Aizawa thinking that that might just be his quirk. And that'll be kind of an advantage. That'll be the only good score he gets. But for the rest of the test, Deku would go by blitzing the race before the timer could, you know, registrate it. As he would then proceed to destroy the thing, annihilate the box, annihilate the sit-ups, crunches, and side-to-side -side steps. He would pull a Saitama in the side-to-side -side steps. And this would be no joke. By the end of it, Trice would have actually noticed that Deck was even faster than her. As she would actually get a little, you know, a little bit like, wow, that's insane. I didn't know. You must have a super speed quirk. As Deku says, no, my quirk's called infinity. I'm just, I'm just kind of strong, I guess. And she's like, kind of? You're even faster than me. I have a super speed quirk. As Ida would say, oh, you have a speed quirk as well? As Trice would say, yeah. As she would say, oh, I guess you're not that bad since you have a speed quirk. As he would say, my quirk is called engine. And she would say, oh, I'm a natural speedster. And as Ida would just kind of get a little, you know, hurt by this feelings would be a little hurt since she said natural instead of you know physical boots to his body like engines you know that's kind of weird so you know this is when the day would end with the scores being deku bakugo trice the original order that's essentially how that ends up going and by the end of it this is when deku would actually have aizawa walk up to him asking him if he even tried during the entrance exams as deku would put his hands behind his back and he would kind of get a grin in his face as he would say and eh, not really. I mean, I figured I would just do enough to get in here. As Aizawa would say, if you would have done your best, you might have actually eliminated every single robot in the facility. As Deku would say, yeah, but that'd be no fun. Nobody else would get in. As Aizawa would just think that this kid is insane. That if he's not turned into a monster, who knows what could happen. As he would actually, you know, tell Deku to throw the ball again. As Deku would grab the ball and Aizawa would try to cancel this quirk, but nothing. Nothing at all. He wouldn't have even been able to cancel it. He would wonder what's going on. As Deku would say that, yeah, his quirk is a mutation. Aizawa would just be like, oh, I mean, I guess that's why. So he would just be wondering about Deku, like, huh. It's kind of suspicious. Oh, my dog started barking. Hold on, guys. I'm going to go shush her up. So, anyways, if you guys end up hearing some other dogs in the background, that's just the neighbors. I don't know why. These dogs around here just started being like, rrr, 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 all annoying. So, anyways, you should calm down in about, you know, two minutes. And I'm pretty sure that it's not going to be registered in the video. So, you guys are probably going to think that I'm just insane. But, anyways, with that being said, after this, Deku actually has Trice walk up to him and ask him if he's doing something after this. As Deku would actually say no, and they would pretty much walk off as she would pretty much you know go to the go no 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 no. they would go to the arcade as they would proceed to just have a pretty fun day you know they'd, they'd talk a little bit and get to know each other and end it off at the park where trice would actually ask deku to take his blindfold off as deku would actually say okay as he would take his blindfold off and trice would see his eyes for the first time as she then tells him that her, his eyes they're they're beautiful as Deku would just kind of be like, ah, stop it, you're making me blush. As she would just be like, okay, I might just have to take that back. As Deku would just proceed to start chuckling to himself. As she says, you're a really interesting guy, you know that. As Deku would just be like, yeah, I guess. As he would walk her home, and they'd go home, get each other's numbers, and that's essentially how that little thing would go down. So, now we're going to go ahead and jump on into the heroes versus villains thing. Where this is actually going to go a little bit different than in canon. In this version of events, it's actually going to be Deku and Trice versus Uraraka and Bakugo. The All Might situation and the costume situation would pretty much be the same, with Deku's costume essentially being Gojo's outfit, that exact same outfit with the blindfold. I only figured it was the right thing to do. Trice's costume would pretty much be what you guys see on the community tab post if you guys want to go check that out. Uraraka would have a normal costume, and Bakugo would, uh, you know, have his normal costume as well with a couple of, you know, fixes. Actually giving him the more, you know, recent suit. Since that one actually looks better to me in my opinion. Since he uses that to his advantage since it makes him sweat more. And with that being said, you know, now we're going to go ahead and run into the heroes versus villains. 
Where, as soon as this thing actually gets started, Deku would look at Trice and say, so how fast do you want to win this? As uh, Trice would look at Deku and say, how fast can he go? As Deku would say, if you want, I could just go touch the bomb and we could get out of here. And she would say, I'd like that. And Deku would chuckle, you know, getting, you know, a little friend of him would just, hey, a little friend of his would just wake up. As, you know, Deku would blitz into the room faster than ever before, grabbing the bomb and saying, we won. As Baku would say, what? As, you know, you know, or Rock would be like, what? How, how did you win? As Deku would just say, you know, just, that was easy. As, you know, all my just like, heroes win? As he's just like, that kid is even faster than me. I would have never been able to do that. As Trice is just like, okay, you're going to need to teach me how to get that fast. As Deku just chuckles and says, sure. As they would actually proceed to do a little bit of training after class and just a little bit of hanging out together, getting to know each other a little bit more. Still no studying, but, you know, they're getting there. So, this is when we're actually going to go ahead and skip on over to the day of the USJ attack. <clears throat> where things are actually going to go relatively the same up until they arrive with, you know, Hero 13 giving her really annoying speech. And actually, no, things would go a lot different. When they're outside, Deku would actually sense the malice and, and the, you know, the negative energy inside there. As Deku would actually tell Aizawa that his quirk actually allows him to, you know, sense a lot of things. And there's a multitude amount, there's an incredible amount of people over there. Sorry, not teachers. An incredible amount of people in there. And he tells them that they would actually, they, it would be safer for them to ask for backup and, you know, not engage. As this, this is when Aizawa would actually heed Deku's warning. As he would then sit call in a couple of heroes resulting in all might appearing and this this is when the heroes would bust inside and this is when deck would look at her at uh you know trice and bakugo and ask them if they want to have a little bit of fun as they would say sure as deck would grab them grab the both of them blitz inside making them both you know be in there with the villains as they would pretty much go inside and start kicking some butt as they would proceed to knock some people out and take others out really swiftly. As Deku would just blitz in there and start, you know, slamming people's heads together, grabbing their hands and making them hold each other. As he would just go in there and start goofing off with the villains. As the villains would be terrified of him. And, you know, he would just be having the time of his life. This, this is when Deku would actually see, you know, All Might taken down on the Nomu. With the rest of the villains pretty much, you know, have actually escaped since Shig Shigaraki would have actually seen that, so he would have teleported away before Deku would have even gotten a chance to meet him. So this is when All Might would pretty much have a little bit of a tough time against Noma, as Deku would walk up to All Might and hold him by the shoulder, asking him if he needs some help. As, you know, All Might would say, uh, this is my fight, oh, I got this. As Deku would say, no, I don't think you do. As he would grab All Might and take him back to the entrance. As Deku would then look at the Nomu and get into a little bit of a fist fight with it, seeing that it can regenerate, and Deku would just proceed to have a blast as he then fights something that can actually regenerate after all of his blows, so he doesn't have to hold back. As Deku would punch holes straight through the thing, as he would then use red and blue to pull and push the thing. So he would use blue. <coughs> Yeah, he would use blue pretty much. I'm pretty sure that blue is the one that pulls. Yeah, blues pull, reds push. Don't quote me on that. Um, yeah, I'll just say blue. Yeah, yeah, red is red is out. red is out. Blue is pushed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, so he would use blue to pull the gnome in, as Deku would pretty much have it right in his neck, as he would then use his hand to aim it straight at the gnome and say purple as it would pretty much destroy the gnome, atomizing it and leaving zero cells behind to heal. As All Might would just be watching in complete complete shock, seeing that Deku could do that on that type of scale. I mean, he saw him do it to a little piece of trash, but that was, that was trash, not something that can regenerate. As Deku would actually, you know, proceed to get scolded a bit until All Might walks in and says that this kid is a hero. He might have actually gotten defeated by that thing that was maybe even more powerful than he was as the heroes would realize the severity of what Deku had just done and realize how powerful this kid really is as they would actually start you know praising the kid as you know Deku would actually grab Trice and Bakugo and say yeah they helped too as the heroes would then proceed to kind of scold Deku and Deku would kind of just be like Hoo -hoo, just kind of whistling as he has his hands behind his back and just says well I gotta go as he would get the heck out of there along with Trice and Bakugo grab her Araka since he knows you know Bakugo likes her and they'd go on a little bit of a double date as Deku just teases Bakugo the entire day telling him that you know come on now he and his girlfriend need to get tighter uh you know closer I guess you could say as Bakugo and her you know proceed to kind of you know get, get to know each other a little bit more and stop being so you know so dang awkward 
as Deco and Trice just proceed to you know, keep hitting it off. They're having an incredible time. And this, this is when we're going to go ahead and go into the week break, where Deco essentially just chills and hangs out with Trice. He also trains in a certain move that he's going to be using in the sports festival to increase it to you know, have attacks not go in there. As he, uh, I don't know if it really does that in the original, but I'm going to make it do that just because. So, anyways, this is when the week break would go by, and Deku would proceed to pretty much just chill with Trice and kind of train her in hand-to-hand -in -hand combat, as well as making her a little faster than she originally is. So, that's essentially how that little thing would go by. So, this is when we're going to go ahead and uh, go into the day where Trice would actually ask Deku what his powers really are, as she's really interested in his quirk, as Deku would actually look at her and go, Say, not gay, say, say, I got a secret. As she would say, what is it? Dick would say, my power is not really a quirk. As she would be stunned and she'd say, really? As Dick would say, yeah, it's the thing I call cursed energy. As Dick would explain all the intricacies of it and she would actually be extremely surprised by how this works and how it is. As she would actually think that it's incredible. As we're gonna go ahead and go right back to the school day as you know all the classes would come you know Deku would just tell them all to leave please politely being nice about it as they would all actually you know listen to him you know he has some good vibes some good energy meaning that Bakugo never gets a chance to tell him to leave in a little bit of a meaner way so they would actually you know be like eh, you guys better watch your back as they just all pretty much leave and this this one Aizawa would tell them all about the you know the the UA sports festival as they would proceed to all pretty much get a little hype about it and Deku would just be thinking that this is gonna be a drag <laughs> Shikamaru anyways uh he would not actually say that but he would just kind of be excited and you know kind of lazy about it because he hopes that it's not gonna be making him you know put too much effort into it so yeah that's pretty much how that goes down so this is when we're gonna actually have the speech by Bakugo as he actually ends up still saying that he's gonna win but in a little bit of a nicer way since he's not that much of a mean guy anymore and he would actually end up declaring war on the other students making everybody actually hype about the sports festival for the first years considering that they're all going to be out for this kid who claims to win as you know they're actually excited to see if this kid can actually you know talk the talk and walk the walk so yeah that's pretty much how that goes this is when midnight would actually announce the race and honestly as soon as the race starts, Deku, before the ice can even get shot by Todoroki, would blitz straight through it, as he would actually end up winning the race. And, you know, in terms of the rest of the thing, it would pretty much be in this order. Trice, Bakugo, Todoroki, and the rest of it. Because Trice has a speed quirk. Yeah, Bakugo's incredibly fast, but Trice is, you know, she has a speed quirk. So, yeah, she would actually barely beat Bakugo, considering that he's extremely fast as well. And that's essentially how the race would go down. In terms of the cavalry battle, this is actually still going to be a one-sided stomp, since in this version, we're going to be having Deku, Trice, Uraraka, and Bakugo. Uraraka would actually cause everybody to be weightless, as Deku would actually hold them on, on you know, he would actually have, you know, uh, you know, himself and Bakugo at the bottom, with Uraraka and Trice at the top. You know, them both actually just chilling there, sitting there. As Deku would actually pretty much put a put a uh <clears throat> puts up a, uh what's it called what's it called what's it called, what's it called? <clears throat> as Deku would have actually ended up performing a move called the curtain barrier you know pretty much creating a barrier between themselves and the other classmates as well as any attacks that they can shoot around them as Deku would proceed to just stand there with his 10 million point headband the headband of Bakugo and Trice, making the other kids essentially be, you know, struggling for the rest of them. And this would lead into more of a hard battle in terms of the rest of the guys. Everybody would kind of be like, boo, you guys are lame, go fight. As Deku would just kind of be like, eh, I'd rather not. As they pretty much just stand there and Bakugo's like, let's go. As Deku says, no, I don't want to. As Bakugo would try to move, but Deku would just be like a mountain and he cannot move this guy. As they would proceed to pretty much win. And this, this is when we're going to go actually ahead into the battles. And this is going to be a lot different than you would expect. As soon as Shinso tries to make Deku talk, Deku would actually not have been warned by Ojiro since they're not exactly friends. As Deku would actually respond back, as he would say, what's it like having an amazing quirk? As Deku would say, you know what, it's kind of not. As he would get caught into the control. Psych. This is when Shinso would get brought into Deku's um, <clears throat> limitless, uh, or no, 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 infinite void. Oh my god, I always forget the name. 
Hold on, let me go, let me go check it out. Let me go check it out. Let me go check it out. Please don't get tired of me. Please don't, you know, rage at me in the comments. I beg of you guys. Please. Please. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> oh my god, I'm having way too much fun with this one. Yeah. So, yeah, I honestly, guys, I cannot. Oh, yeah, domain expansion. He would actually go into Deku's domain. And this, this is when Shinso would just pass out instantly as soon as that happens. And in this version, the second battle that Deku's actually going to be taking a part of isn't going to be Todoroki. The battle that he's going to be taking place in is actually going to be Deku versus Trice. As Deku would actually just look at Trice as he would then say, can't do it, I quit, as he would not exactly want to, you know, hit her, as he's kind of lazy, and he already kind of proved this point, that he's way stronger than the other kids, as he thinks that, you know, he should get some decent offers after that, as, you know, seeing that Deku didn't want to hit a girl, a certain somebody saw that and thought that that was very gentleman-like, as well as very, you know, courteous and formal, as he would actually end up sending a, a you know, request to, to go get Deku, as well as his weird nature, <laughs> As we don't want to kind of reform him a bit. So, yeah. In terms of the Bakugo versus Todoroki situation, Bakugo would have actually gotten a one-sided stomp in that battle, considering that Todoroki still actually has his daddy issues, considering Deku is not there to tell him, It's your quirk, Kachan! I mean, I mean uh, sorry. It's your quirk, Todoroki! As Todoroki, you know, uses his flames, but there's none of that, so... Yeah, Bakugo is just kind of offended by the fact that he doesn't even use his full power. And he would actually proceed to beat on Todoroki after, you know, he doesn't use his power. As the stand just looks at that and thinks that Bakugo is really, you know, crazy. As the next battle is going to be Bakugo versus Trice. But considering that Trice is kind of hard to hit, but Bakugo can actually kind of keep up with her, he would actually end up pulling the win. Not, and since Trice couldn't actually do a lot of hits that would damage Bakugo, Bakugo would end up pulling the win with 37% full count. Since during that week, Bakugo would have actually gotten a little bit of training in. So, yeah, that's pretty much how that situation goes. And now we're going to go ahead and go back to school. After Bakugo would have actually done what he had promised. He said that he was going to win and that's exactly what he did. So, this is when Bakugo would actually be, you know, in class. As all of them would pretty much be picking their hero names. As Deku is actually going to pick the name Limitless. As Bakugo would pick Dynamite, Trice would pick Racer, and Uraraka would pick Ravity. And yeah, that's pretty much how that goes down. This one Aizawa would actually tell the kids to pretty much go pick their hero that they want to go be with. As everybody would be like, huh, I guess we get to pick now. That's, that's awesome. As Deku would actually then proceed to look through his list. As he would then see Best Genus as the top option. As he would say, yep, that's the one. I want to go with him. As he would pretty much pull a Bakugo, and Bakugo would actually end up going with Gran Torino, leading to a kind of similar arc in terms of the stain arc, because Bakugo is way stronger than Deku for one, and when he saw Ida acting strange, he definitely noticed that was weird. And he put two and two together in terms of, you know, Bakugo, I mean, Ida going to host city. Sorry guys, let me go tell my dog to be quiet. Uh, where was I? Honestly, guys, I don't know. Anyways, so, you know, that situation with the stain situation would pretty much go the same, except a lot smoother, considering that Bakugo would actually have a lot of an easier time taking on stain, considering he almost has 40% full cowling. And yes, stain is an amazing fighter, but so is Bakugo. And this Bakugo being way faster than Stain doesn't actually give Stain the time of day to actually scratch him and get some of his blood, resulting in the win with Bakugo being way more one-sided than you would think. And Stain would actually get apprehended with the credit pretty much going to Endeavor like it does in canon. In terms of Deku's situation with Best Genius, Deku's actually going to be having the rough time that Bakugo had at the beginning. With Best Genius pretty much trying to make Deku lose the child, the, you know, the goofiness and you know, the the, the the immaturity that Deku has, but instead of actually having Deku be the one who changes because of this, and, you know, you know uh, Best Genus influence, Deku's actually the one who has his personality rub off on Best Genus, because it's it's just infectious. His personality is just, it's, it just rubs off on people, and he just has such a good nature to him with it's just some kindness coming from Inko, as, you know, his personality is always just going to shine through at the end of the day. So, that's pretty much how that thing goes on. With Deku pretty much getting to, you know, relax a bit. Making Best Genius, you know, be more chill and, you know, funnier, I guess you could say. 
and Deku would pretty much get nothing but knowledge in terms of how to be hero, considering that that's pretty much all that Deku really needs. He doesn't need that other stuff. So Deku would pretty much just go out patrolling, and he would actually discover that he's actually pretty amazing with kids, impressing Best Genius, seeing that Bakugo wasn't there to tell them that, you know, he'll, you know, kick their ass or something like that. So, yeah. Next, we actually are going to have the race, in which Deku doesn't actually feel like you know participating in it as much or even putting in any effort so Deku pretty much just proceeds to walk during the entirety of the race which results in Deku pretty much getting stumped in it and Deku's actually kind of fine with it because I mean he has no reason to try hold on guys I'm gonna go ahead and go get some water and I will actually be right back alrighty guys I'm back from getting my little water break my throat was getting a little dry pause anyways um this is when we're actually going to cut over to the finals this is actually going to go a lot different considering that deku is a little bit of a dummy so in this time he's actually going to have to study for once considering that trice is there telling him that if he fails she's going to break up with him as deku is just freaking out thinking that he can't lose her as you know it's pretty brutal you know studying for him as he goes with trice and they do both types of studying, you know, they do a lot of studying together. Deku ends up learning a lot, a lot of knowledge and with, you know, the incentive of Trice doing some extra studying with him, you know, hitting math, you know, science, history, you know, they're, they're really doing it all as that's essentially how that pretty much goes down. <laughs> so, yeah, in terms of the finals with Deku and, you know, Booksmart-ish, I guess you could say, that Deku barely actually ends up passing it. Because, I mean, Deku's not exactly the brightest book in the shed. He's not exactly your, you know, a genius, I guess you could say. He's not, yeah, he's definitely not a genius. So it's kind of hard for Deku to do extremely well. But, you know, Deku pulls through. He pulls his weight. And, you know, he finally does it. He does a pretty good job at it. I'm not going to lie. So that's essentially how that's going to go down. So now we're actually going to go ahead and cut on into the battle. He does all right in terms of the test, like I just said, you know. And in terms of the battle with All Might, it's a one-sided stomp. Anything that All Might would have tried to do to Deku would just be dodged, as Deku would actually show off in front of the entirety of the class, as he then tells everybody, Watch, guys, I'm about to whoop the floor with the number one hero. It's after hearing that All Might decides to, you know, put on a, uh, a facade that he's not going to go all out. As he tells Deku he's not going to try his hardest. As Deku just chuckles and said he's about to show off for Trice. As he would actually proceed to ex literally do what he did to Sukuna. And in the anime, and that's essentially how he does All Might. So, that's a one-sided stomp with Bakugo being like, dude. I didn't get to fight All Might. And Deku would be like, oh, that's right. I thought it was a one on one. As Baku goes, just like, Ugh. if I can't fight All Might, I'm fighting you. As then we have a fight between Deku and Bakugo, which Deku actually ends up winning and has to drag Bakugo's unconscious body outside. As everybody's just like, is that allowed? As, you know, they're all like, you know, I mean, Bakugo started it, so I mean, I guess it is. As they're like, I mean, they technically pass, so let's just let them pass. As Nezu can just see that raw strength potential in Deku that's just, it's limitless. Hence his name. So, yeah, that's essentially how that goes. And now we're actually going to go ahead and cut into the forest. But not before some good old studying. You know, Deku had to hit the books again. He had to do a lot of reading, math, science, you know, history class. He really had to hit the books. He had to learn about 1999 and the, and the anime uh, revolution of Christopher Christopher Midoriya with, you know, the battle against uh, the stormtroopers. So, yeah, they ended up learning about that. And you know how you got to play soccer with a hockey puck? You know, all that stuff, you know, all, all this crazy stuff. But this ain't hockey, this is tennis, so, you know, it's, it's really different. So, anyways, with that being said, guys, this is when they're pretty much going to be on the bus. And this is actually going to go a lot different than you guys would actually expect it to go. These, this events would actually go kind of similar, pretty much, with the addition of Trice there. As soon as they arrive, the kids basically get thrown off with Deku actually grabbing Trice because he doesn't want her to get hurt. Landing perfectly. As he would then look towards Bakugo and Trice, as he would say... Hey, how about a friendly race to see who gets there quicker? As Bakugo, Trice, and Deku would say, 
as Bakugon tries to say, you're on. As they would proceed to blitz over there. Arriving there with Deku first, Trice actually second, because she was actually training her butt off even more. With Deku there to help her train her, train her physical speed and, and strength, she would have actually ended up beating Bakugo by a little bit. Uh, a little bit more than she did in the race. And yeah, that's pretty much how that goes. And this is when Bakugoto said, oh, Araka, I kind of left there. So he would actually go back there and actually help them all take down on the things. This would result in them all pretty much doing the same time that they did in the original canon. Eh, yeah, the same time. I mean, 15 minute difference wouldn't matter. So yeah, they pretty much do the same time. And when Koda arrives and tries to punch Deku in the balls, it doesn't actually end up working because Deku in this time, he has infinity. So when, ba when Koda tries it, Deku's just like, hey, What's, what's the big deal? As, you know, he's just saying, well, what's going on? As, and he's like, what's the big idea? As, pretty much, you know, Code is just like, ah. And, you know, as soon as the class arrives, they're all kind of butthurt, considering that Deku and Trice just straight left. And, you know, Deku and Trice would have actually gotten a little bit of studying done since the teachers weren't around and there's no cameras around. So, you know, they, they did a little bit of math because that's the that's the thing that Deku's actually lacking in. You know, they did a little bit of math because Deku just doesn't know how to do uh, um, uh, Pythagorean theorem. So, yeah, that's pretty much what they do in terms of that. And, you know, they pretty much proceed to eat and have the springs. This pretty much goes to canon with Mineta. Walther meant to be climbed. And yes, Mineta stays. You're probably like, why does Mineta stay if Hargakure doesn't stay? Comedic effect? Come on. We need Mineta. As much as we all kind of hate him deep on the inside, Mineta makes some really funny situations. And without him, Deku would never end up learning about Koda and his stuff. As well as, you know, a couple of other things, I, th I think. I'm pretty sure that was actually his only contrib con contribution. So, yeah, that's pretty much how that happens. And, you know, the next day it comes around. But, uh, oh, also, I forgot to explain. Deku does actually learn about Koda. Seeing that he actually wants to know what's the big deal with this kid. As they would actually explain to Deku, you know, why Koda has this view on heroes. As the very next day of training, Deku just kind of lazes around. And, you know, actually, by the time that Class 1B arrives, Deku would actually go to Aizawa really mischievously. As he then says, hey, Aizawa, how about I propose a deal to you? If I win, if, how about this? If I can manage to take down class 1B and you and the teacher, can I have an easy time during the force training? As Aizawa would look at Deku and just kind of be like, kid, you may be strong, but you're not going to take down class 1B and two pro heroes. As Deku's just like, ah, but I'm willing to give it a try. As Aizawa would just say, your death wish. As they would actually proceed to get into a battle. As, you know, Vlad, Vlad, Vlad King, or something like that, Blood King, I don't know, him. He would proceed to actually tell his class that they need to try their hardest and embarrass this kid. As Deku would have actually ended up wiping the floor with them, causing Deku to pretty much just kind of relax, and him actually having the time of his life. Now, this is when nighttime would come around, and Deku would actually have done the same thing, bringing the curry to Koda. Except this time, Trice would actually have came along with him. Since Deku would have actually told Trice about it, since he didn't do his own training, he decided he would actually help Trice since he doesn't do his own stuff. And Trice would actually be extremely exhausted. So Koda, I mean, Koda is actually going to have Trice and Deku to talk to this version. As Trice would actually get through to Koda a little bit more than Deku would. Since he kind of thinks that Deku's kind of annoying, since he just kind of strikes me as that guy. And this, this is when Muscular would arrive, telling them all that this is so heartwarming. They're helping this kid whose parents die, as he would proceed to come and clap and telling them all that, telling them all that, eh, that it doesn't matter if they die. That will pro that he's actually gonna help Koda reunite with his parents, as Deku would hear that and just be like, nope, as you know, Koda would say, take that back, as he sprays water at Muscular, and this is when Muscular would say, <laughs> wait, kid. Are your parents the water hose heroes? As he would proceed to tell them about the eye. And, you know, Koda would get terrified after realizing this. And once Deku realizes that it was muscular who killed his kid's parents and drove him to this point, Deku would have no mercy. He would use purple, instantly disintegrating him and eliminating him from the face of the earth, telling Trice that a guy like him doesn't deserve to exist. As Koda would actually look at Deku and think of him as a real hero. He avenged his parents, and most of all, he saved his life. He thanks Deku with a hug, 
and tells him that, you know, from now on, he's gonna try to change his ways. So Deku would smile until tries to take Tim away. As Deku would proceed to go into the forest and help Tokiyami, using, you know, his uh, his abilities, and he would take, you know, them straight to Bakugo, with Tokiyami taking out, you know, the guy. And this, this is when Deku would actually proceed afterwards, grab Bakugo and ask Bakugo if he'd be willing to help him out with a couple of things. As Bakugo and Deku would rush around the forest, helping out and taking out Spinner, Magma, Mr. Compressed, Toga, Dobby, twice, they would take everybody down. Forcing one for all to actually have to appear opening forcefully opening his own portal to try to grab all of the uh, You know the League of Villains members, but as this is happening all for one actually has the worst luck of his life Since the first person he tried to go to was actually the last person that Deku actually just took out His all for one would arrive and actually look at this kid as he would then say So you're the one who's been taking down all of my subjects as he would do some, you know, you know, your usual villain talk. As, uh, you know, Deku would actually get into a fight with All For One. Is at first, Deku would actually have a little bit of a blast. Thinking that this guy's kind of strong. And all of the quirks actually kind of make him a little bit of a threat. And Deku would actually proceed to toy around with All For One. Making him believe that he has a chance of winning. But this is when All For One would actually unleash his attack that would devastate the forest. Killing a bunch of animals. And after this... Deku would actually get angered, thinking that he just took out a lot of animals. He might have injured some of his friends, and he would tell him that for that, he doesn't deserve to have that life. As he would use purple to eliminate one for all, resulting in a one-sided stomp, which Deku would then proceed to say, It's a shame you're evil. Maybe if you were a good guy, we could have actually, you could have actually been a little bit of a good sparring partner. As Deku would then walk away, having, you know, taken down all for one, the big and bad. And also, having, you know, helped a lot more in the situation than he would have known. It would be the headlines. UA student took down the big and bad. As Deku would just be, you know, regarded as the next number one hero. Even, you know, stronger than Mirio. As this time, you know, a lot of things would actually go different. A lot of people would actually not get hurt. And this would make for some, you know, very different things happen. So, this is when the villains would actually get taken away, as this would make a lot of other things happen later on, causing a little bit of an impact to Deku's next couple arcs that we're going to be covering. So, this is when Class 1A actually ends up returning back to school, as they're just really straight up chilling there, honestly. They're all having a pretty great time, as then, they're actually told about the provisional license exams, as they would actually go in and take the provisionals, as Deku would actually meet you know that one kid was really annoying as he would actually point out that he's fake before Bakugo even got the chance to telling him that you know if you're gonna sit here and put on that fake persona you might as well not do it I can see right through it as he would actually smile and think that this guy might actually be something as you know we have a little bit of an encounter between Deku and Earthquake Boy if you guys don't know who I'm talking about it's Earthquake Boy the one who looks like Midoriya so yeah, that's pretty much how that situation pretty much goes down in terms of this version. In terms of the provisional, Deku would actually go around and help his team, his, uh, his classmates actually do way better in terms of the eliminating other, you know, other people from the thing. Considering that Deku's even stronger than his, you know, original counterpart, or most of my other Dekus, Deku would definitely be an extremely big help to everybody. Not just, not just his classmates, but even some other people who he actually ends up liking he would have actually you know uh unconsciously having helped other people and when gang orca appears deku would proceed to slap that man around because he sees todoroki and inasa arguing as todoroki would fail because of that but he would actually be the only one who actually ends up failing in this scenario so this this is when they pretty much return to school and at this time during this time that you know the students were taking the provisional license at this time, Shigaraki and Kurogiri would have learned about All For Once, you know, disappearance, how he was taken down by that kid, that brat who killed the Nomu and took down all of his, all of his minions, as he would have nothing but fodder people right next to him. As this, this is when he would actually approach Gigant Gigantomachia, as well as Doctor, who actually ends up helping Shigaraki get stronger. And this is when Shigaraki would unlock his potential. And he would actually go over to join the Liberation Army. Considering that he has no other option. As this, 
is when, you know, Shigaraki would actually be getting the upgrade for himself during this time that he's going to have off. Because since All for One is dead, he doesn't actually end up getting All for One because, you know, there's no quirk to be passed down. So Shigaraki just gets an upgrade to his quirk, leading to a pretty big upgrade and having essentially the same decay power Shigaraki that we have in the manga. And this, yes, boys, this is actually going to delve into a little bit of manga territory. I'm not exactly going to be spoiling much, considering that I'm not really going to go too deep into detail. But, you know, if you guys don't want to be spoiled at all, I'd suggest, you know, clicking off and watching season five. And, you know, you'll get a little bit more of a glimpse into what's going on. But, you know, if you want to finish the video, be my guest. I don't really mind. So, <laughs> better for me, more watch time. <laughs> Anyways, so, this is when the big three would pretty much come in. And a lot of things would kind of go to canon, except Mario wouldn't be able to hit Deku. And Deku wouldn't actually be able to hit Mario. Resulting in a bit of a stalemate, but this is when Deku would actually decide that enough is enough after Mirio actually decided to leave Deku and go punch Trice in the gut, making her actually cough out some blood. And Mirio, you done messed up as Deku would blitz over to Mirio as he takes off the blindfold and says, Domain expansion. As Mirio would be inside his domain and he's just floating. As Deku would, you know, you know, pretty much just have Mirio trapped. As Deku would proceed to hit Mirio where it hurts, delivering a blow right back to Mirio with, you know, the same amount of force as Trice, almost ripping a hole through Mirio. As he would actually drop him out of there, and Mirio would actually be having to take down to recovery go to heal, because that pretty much fractured a couple ribs in Mirio's body, and you know, definitely he hurt him a lot. So that's essentially how that goes down. In this version, Bakugo is actually the one who actually ends up getting along with Mirio and going with Sir Naide, considering that he's the successor of One for All. And, you know, in this version, Bakugo is still actually going to be letting Eri go. So, that situation kind of goes like Deku's, except a lot better. Because Sir Naide actually acknowledges Bakugo as a worthy successor. Seeing that Bakugo was actually able to take the stamp away, seeing that Bakugo was actually able to put up a fight against Mirio, and, you know, just seeing the raw potential that Bakugo has deep inside of him. Pause. As, you know, now, we're gonna actually go ahead and cut into Deku's point of view, as Deku would have actually gone with Best Genius, considering that he went with him last time, and he would actually decide that he should have a repeat as he would actually go with Best Genius and this time would actually do a little bit of hero work with him, taking down a couple of slow perps. As at this time, this is when currently the League of Villains <clears throat> and uh, I mean, not League of Villains remaining members and the Liberation Army would actually be growing in terms of size. As this is when we actually have overhaul situation, which results in kind of the same people with you no, know, the same intel happening and Best Genus being called considering that he's actually healthy. So Deku would actually arrive. And when Deku actually hears about the things that Overhaul has been doing to the girl and, and hears a, a, with, a, from first person from Bakugo about what he let go, Deku would be angered at Bakugo for the first time, telling him that all oh, this bravado, all these years, and you let that girl go. He says, Deku, I, as he just doesn't have the words, as Deku just kind of went off on him and just kind of told him that, you know, what the heck? You, my best friend, didn't save the girl who needed saving the most. Imagine if that was you and a hero would have let you go. Go back to the depths of hell that she's living in. As Bakugo would just feel awful about what he did. Realizing that Deku was absolutely right. Deku was right for everything that he's saying to him. And Bakugo would tell Deku that he understands. That he's going to make right for what he did. As Deku would look at Bakugo and tell him, damn right he is. As this is when the overhaul situation would actually go by extremely different than it would have actually gone by in the original canon. This time, Deku would just punch holes straight through the walls and he would sense where Shisaki is. As he goes over there and instantly just proceeds to torture Shisaki, telling him that if this feels nice, does it feel nice to have this dad done to you? Does it? As he would have actually grabbed Aerie and taken her to Bakugo. As Bakugo would do things right. And be Aerie's hero. 
and she would actually not be aware of Deku taking down Shisaki. But Deku would just wail on Shisaki as he then uses purple to take him out of his misery. Is that? That's how the overhaul arc goes. Considering that Deku will not actually have anybody who could actually even stand in his way, this is how a lot of fights in terms of this are actually going to go. So, now, we're actually going to go ahead and go into some normal stuff, I guess we could say. As now, we're going to go ahead and go into the US Sports Festival, and Deku would actually still forget the items that he did in canon. Except this time, when he goes up to Gentle, he would not take none of this. That, girl, that girl's day is going to be broken, and Deku's not having it. He would turn this man into the police before he can even... He would not fight him at all. He would grab him, hold him, blitz to the police station, and Gentle would be taken care of. Gentle would try to put up a fight, but Deku would then knock him out. As he would actually take in La Brava as well. Kind of sad, but that's just how things gotta go sometimes. And Aerie would actually end up having the time of her life. Yay, Aerie! Anyways, so that's pretty much how that ended up going. So this... This is when the villains would actually pretty much be have getting ready to essentially attack the heroes. And Sh Shigaraki's procedure would be almost done. So they would actually have about four months to just do, the, do themselves, train themselves up. And the heroes or the students would actually be doing a great job. With Deku there, at this time, he would actually decide that maybe he should help his classmates a bit. As he would actually help them all get stronger in raw physical strength tactical mindsets in terms of a combat and he would actually help Trice and Bakugo get ahead way more than they ever thought. Bakugo would have 60% one for all. He would have unlocked Black Whip Float and a Danger Detection as well as any of the other quirks that uh, as well as another quirk. I'm not going to say what it is but you know we don't exactly know what it is but yeah that's how Bakugo's situation would be going and he would have actually mastered all those quirks in the four months that he had. So that's how that's going to go. And now this is when they would pretty much do the joint training arc, resulting in Bakugo actually being the one who flares up with the Black Whip, with Deku's team pretty much blitzing, and since the joint training arc is actually kind of whack, it wouldn't actually change much than it did in canon, just Deku's match would go by a lot easier, because this time he's actually going to have Trice on his team instead of Uraraka, and Bakugo's going to have Uraraka on his team. So, that's how that's going to be going, guys. Anyways, this, this is when the villains would actually bust right through the gates of UA as it would be none other than the light the leader of the Liberation Army Shigaraki Gigantomachia villains would just be slaughtering people throughout the uh, excuse me throughout the city and no moves would just be going rampant as you know all the heroes would immediately rush over to UA as Deku would be having none of this none of his classmates are getting hurt as Deku would go in there and proceed to body the small villains along with class 1a and any of the heroes putting up as much of a fight as they can Deku would see uh Gigantomachia but he would decide that he'll take him out later on and this this was definitely going to be something that's going to have Deku you know having a hard time as Deku would decide that he should actually take care of the Nomu first using his purple attack to, you know, obliterate them all as soon as possible so that they can't actually heal. And at this point, Bastinus would actually arrive on the battlefield and try to take down Gigantomachia, resulting in Bastinus actually getting flung away and extremely critically injured. As Deku would have rushed in there just to see his master or his mentor just be flung around by this creature. As Deku would have punched this thing and tortured it, pretty much. As it would be taken down swiftly as possible. As everyone would pretty much have eliminated most of the Nomos as well as the small villains. As the only ones would, that would be left would be Redestro and Shigaraki. This is when, you know, a lot of the other people would, some heroes would actually end up losing their lives. With Deku realizing the severity of the situation. And putting, you know, him, Kuro, Kurogiri, Shigaraki, and Redestro in his domain expansion. As he would then use Infinite Void to completely obliterate Shigaraki's mind. And if the mind decays, the body follows. So Redestrum and Shigaraki would be nothing but vegetables after that attack was used on them. As they would have seen everything. They wouldn't be able to process it correctly. As that, that's where Deku would have defeated them both. All three of them actually. As Kurogiri would have actually died right after that. He couldn't handle it at all. Redestro and Shigaraki, they were turned into nothing but mere vegetables. And after this... 
Deku would rush to the best genius, rushing him to the hospital, as he would actually barely recover from it and be able to return to his hero work, as at the end of everything, Deku gets praised, and after this, Nezu would actually decide that he's going to end up passing Deku to become a pro hero, because with him as a pro hero, they can stop a lot more incidents, and seeing that Deku is strong and has the intelligence, as well as the, the, the know-how the know to become a hero, Deku would actually go to be a sidekick at, for Best Genius for the next two years that he has left. Seeing that Best Genius is, you know, kind of his, his mentor, I guess you could say. As Deku would actually end up joining Best Genius, you know, his thing, being a sidekick to learn the ropes a bit more. And this is where we're going to be leaving off the 6K special, guys. I hope you guys liked my interpretation of what if Deku was Satoru Gojo's reincarnation. I hope I did this character justice. I hope you guys enjoyed this series. And I really want to thank you all for 6K. It really has been an amazing journey with you guys. And I hope that we can be hitting 10K soon. Because, you know, my content is only going to get better and better. And you guys are only going to be getting more and more amazing content from me. But with that being said, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to go down. Leave a like down below. Let me know what you thought of the video. Recommend it to a friend if you who watches Jujutsu Kaisen. And just, you know, go ahead and, you know, spam what you liked about the video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button since a lot of you guys actually aren't subscribed. Come on now, help me get to 7K. <laughs> I want to get there tomorrow so you guys can get the 7K special. But no, in all seriousness, guys, though. Thank you so much for subscribing. It has been your boy Zether. And as always, I am out. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. But yeah, Zether out.